Hello, human peoples. You're listening to the podcast network of Gamefully Unemployed. Support us and gain access to great exclusive podcasts like Fox Mulder is a Maniac, Tom and Jeff Watch Batman, Star Trek The Next Futurama, and our latest show, Spiel Boys. Head over to patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. We do game streaming, movie nights with our patrons every Friday night, and you can even commission your own podcast about anything you want. Literally anything, within reason, and we have to do it. You are quite frankly out of excuses not to go visit patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. That's patreon.com slash G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. California. Yes, babe. Yes, hello, babe. (laughs) Why did you randomly say California? (laughs) They know how to party. That's right. They do. That's right. Yeah. Now I'm there. Now I'm there with you. Because the, the film opens with that song. Hello, everyone. <laughs> My name is David Bell. My name is Tom Ryman. And we just watched Day Shift. Day Shift. Day Shift. The, Day the shift. vampires. Day. Mm-hmm. Dave. Dave. No. Sh- no. Dave. Sh- days. Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. No. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> we better just stop Fine. now. <laughs> Vampire hunting is a business. Cut next. And cash your checks. Well, things have changed since you got your ass kicked out the union. If I don't come up with 10K, my wife and my daughter are gonna move to Florida. Hi, Dad. You're late again. And the union is the only place that could give me that kind of money. Your record is chock full of incidents. But he's a new man. One last chance. This is your final warning. Just keep crying. Oh, oh no! Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we did that already. <laughs> All right. That's fair. Um, yeah, this is... Uh, listen, listen. Listen. Hi. <laughs> uh, this is uh, this is a vampire, Jamie Foxx fighting vampires. It's on the Netflix. It is, yeah. Uh, there wasn't much this weekend, was there? there we, we sort of skipped over bodies, bodies, bodies. Yeah. And, like, I'll get around to it. I never... Maybe we'll circle back to that one. I'm just in a position, I'm... if you guys have been following, I'm sort of mid-move right now and kind of where I'm at right now. There's not really easy access to a movie theater for me, so we kind of had to go with streaming this weekend. Yeah, which is fine. Uh, yeah. So we went with... Th- th- this is this is a... Is this doing well? Is this popular? Um, this one? I mean, it's the number one movie on Netflix, according to them, so, you know, take that okay. or leave it. Um yeah, yeah it's, it's, um, it's sitting at like a 52 on Metacritic. So I think it's it's gotten some discussion this weekend. All right. How did you like this movie? Uh, I actually I actually had fun watching it, Dave. I liked this movie. <laughs> Tom, I loved this movie. Great. Okay. I'm glad to hear you say that. <laughs> I absolutely love this movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this movie is perfect. I will say the, it's, like, it's, the movie's not quite perfect, but I did it. This movie is a perfect Tom, like, okay. Yep. This movie's perfect. This movie is perfect. <laughs> uh, statement retracted. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, listen. <laughs> all right, all right. So, uh, this is people <laughs> Okay. So, here's what this movie is. It's exactly what it kn- it knows what exactly it is. Yeah. And it presents itself that what way. This movie and reminded me of right I'll just say this right up top. This movie reminded yeah. me of a less problem or yeah, a less problematic version of John Carpenter's Vampires. I was about to say, this movie knows what it is, and what this movie is, is a 90s vampire movie. Hell yes. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. And so the moment they get, like, they cue, the thing is, they cue you up for that. Like, again, they start with that song, and the title looks straight out of, like, like you said, like a John Carpenter vampires movie, mm-hmm. or like from Dust Till Dawn. Yeah. Yes. It is the corniest, mm-hmm. most 90s bullshit right away. Uh, and it sticks the landing, in my opinion. I think so. As yeah, being that. I was I was pleasantly surprised with how light the movie is. Like I thought it would try to. Yeah. I thought it would sort of go because I think the director's the same director as Project Power. I might be mistaken there. I don't know. The director's done a lot of John Wick and stunt work. Oh, uh, that explains a lot. That explains why Scott Atkins randomly shows up for the mid movie action sequence and why right. that action sequence is so fucking awesome. I was about to say it explains why all the action sequences the, fucking that's, that slap. was the other pleasant surprise that I had. Even though it's it's CGI heavy, but like it's but it also well isn't. done. 
Yeah, but it's not where it matters. Like exactly. they have a car chase. Yes, the car chase was practical and it was very nineties. And it was like, it oh my god, fucked. I fucking love it. It was yeah. so fun. Like the action well, was so much fun in this movie. <laughs> because it took the sensibilities, it took what I liked about nineties action and it modernized it. Because for example, that car chase, no, no CGI that I could tell. It's all like it's it's what you imagine the nineties where they're driving and like there's a tow truck with the thing down that creates a jump. Mm. Like it's that style of nineties action where it's dumb. Um, but it's all practical, like jumps and fucking and like it's it's kinda like it's kind of clever, like him popping his tires to get through the thing, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, but it's also shot with like drones. So it's shot in a way that you could never shoot it in the nineties. But it's done in the style of the 90s. Yeah. And that, that, for me, sums up most of the movie, which is like, it feels 90s, except, yeah, they use CGI. And the, you action, know, the, the action's a lot better. Yeah, the action is way more honed in because it's mm-hmm. fucking John Wick shit. Yeah. Man, it was, uh, I was... I was pleasantly surprised by the action, pleasantly surprised by how light the movie is. What I was saying is I, yeah. thought, I thought it might try to be a little, like, grim... You know, or to have like Jamie Foxx be like a like a mm, you know like a tough quiet right. badass type character. No, he's just a big old goofball. Yeah, in the movie, which was which was really fun. <laughs> the movie is just joy. And yeah. yes, it's and, like, stupid. You're, you're never it, really. It's very stupid. You're never really worried about anyone, and I was fine with that. Like, right. So this is the thing. This is this is what I wanted to talk about. Is like. If people have listened to us a lot. They 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 probably recognize that these are things that like other movies we don't like about other movies or i i certainly don't depends on the movie that's the thing that's what this movie is a a really good demonstration of for me yeah is that the movie right away presents the tone that it wants to be is a and it sticks to that tone yeah and it does it really well and you're right is you're never worried about anybody to the point that spoilers james franco (laughs) turns into a vampire dave franco and they just roll dave franco don't don't put that evil on dave (laughs) Yeah, Dave Franco turns into a vampire, and the movie just keeps going. Yeah, and it's fine. <laughs> like, yeah, Snoop Dogg explodes, and then he's fine. And then he climbs out of the sewer at the end to deliver a Lost right. Boys reference, and I was like, "Yes, movie." Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> it's the action is so cool and so much fun, and the movie's so breezy that it's this is the kind yeah. of movie where I this is. Uh, this is the kind of movie where I don't want to be worried about people. Like, it's not like a suspense thriller or anything like that. You know, it's not like... No, this is... That's what I mean. Yeah. It, it, it's like it's like the mo- It's like the game Doom, right? Yes. Is Doom is... It's not The Last of Us, you no. know? It's yeah. not trying to be that. And I, so you hold it, it... And it instantly presents itself that way. So you hold it to that standard that it's presenting. And this very much does that. Like, compare it to... Like, I just watched the new Jurassic World, mm-hmm. which is a very bad film that makes no sense, that has a lot of, like, stupid fanfare. The difference is that wasn't fun to watch. Mm-hmm. And so, like, it's that, where it's like, this movie, the villain, stupid. Very 90s. I'm gonna kidnap your wife and daughter. So fucking 90s. Yep. And so silly. Yep. The the idea, they just introduce a vampire neighbor, where, like, they have, give her, like, one scene... And then it's like, I'm on your side now. Very stupid. Yes. But, it but does, you know what? It, I didn't give a shit because she starts no. like ninja kicking vampires. <laughs> exactly. Because the movie <laughs> knows exactly what it is. a samurai sword. I'm like, yes. Yeah. It, it, it presents itself one way and it just, it, again, it doesn't fucking falter. It, yeah. it nails it. Uh, I, I, I super enjoyed this stupid yeah. fucking vampire movie. It was, and the, the fact that like the action is so good. Mm hmm that it's the john wick rules right where it's like don't worry about it yeah we'll reward you with some amazing action exactly yeah it doesn't it doesn't matter if the world totally makes sense or if stuff's too convenient or if it's you know the 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 drama is like corny it's like i don't care like it's just so fun like yeah yeah it's the same as john wick rules where it's like what's the continental don't worry who gives a shit paying in coins it's a fucking blast i want to spend i want to spend 17 more hours in that world i don't care yeah like because it's so much fun and that's what this movie is pretty much yeah um all right episode over yeah the end of the episode (laughs) like honestly i don't know like this is i 
this is the kind of shit that I think Netflix needs to be doing, right? Not like two hundred million dollar right. The Gray Man, you know, or like the Prestige stuff, because obviously that didn't really pay right. off for it either. It's like this stuff, like you do, you do your, you do your original series, and then you do your mid budget uh, goofball action movies like this. Yeah, and, and then a- <sighs> acquire other stuff, you know. Yeah, the fucking. So, like, a movie like, I don't know, what was that Mark Wahlberg movie, Infinity? Oh, God, yes. Like, you compare it to a movie like that, where it's like, why? how does that fail and how does this work, right? Um, well, because this, this one made the intelligent decision to not take itself seriously. I think that's what it comes down to. Yeah. It, it's a combination of two things, I think. It's, it's, it understands what it is Mm -hmm. and it also uh delivers in terms of action because i would argue the mark Wahlberg movie it's all like cgi action the action was very that movie was just boring from beginning to end and the action was dull the movie was so self-serious and it was so preoccupied with trying to start a franchise this one doesn't do any of that doesn't do any they could make more of these they could make five more of these but they don't right they don't they don't that's not that's clearly not its focus yeah, no, I literally just remembered that sequels exist. Well, you mentioned that. I didn't it didn't even occur to me mm-hmm. watching this yeah. that they might make a sequel because it feels like a sta- very standalone. Again, it feels like the 90s. Um it's got this so we should we should we could go through the plot a bit, I bet. Yeah, it's pretty um, it's extremely straightforward, but yes. Yeah. Jamie, it, it creates this world where there's just vampire hunters. It, it does and there's create a, kind of a John Wick world. Like, it's, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a secret world of vampire hunters disguised as, like, pool boys and electronics, uh, like, tech bros. Yeah, oh my uh, god, and, the, the brothers. <laughs> the brothers were amazing. Yeah, one of whom is Scott I, Adkins. <laughs> yeah, that was incredible. <laughs> Oh, that was shit. Scott Adkins. Fuck. Yeah, well, the the leaner one. Yeah, was Scott Adkins. Yeah, the one doing all the kicks. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. He's gonna be in the um, next John Wick. The damn right he is. <clears throat> and so there, and so there's like a union version, which is hilarious. When they there's a lot of union stuff in this, yeah, where they like basically... to union bylaws. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the Continental. It's, it's the so Continental. Good. It's basically yeah. Jamie Fox is a freelance uh, a vampire hunter, which means he kind of has to he can't get top dollar for his vampire fangs, which is how they uh, what they deal with with in this world. So he's trying to get right. back into the union so he can get. Ten thousand uh, dollars in five days, or else his estranged wife is going to move out of state with his daughter. Um, He's got to hunt vampires to get his daughter back. Basically, yeah. that's yeah. To, to, to pull to to save his marriage, he has to hunt ten thousand dollars worth perfect. of vampires. That's all See, we need. Like shit like this. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's all we He's need. Like, done. We don't, we don't need like a dramatic backstory. I don't. We don't know anything about him apart from he's a vampire. Hunter. <laughs> yeah, he's a vampire hunter. He's good at it. Yeah, um, but he's not. He's not necessarily the best. You know, so mm-hmm. he's an underdog. We set him up as an underdog, where he's this washed, washed out fucking vampire hunter. Yeah, uh, it's perfect. Uh, wearing a Hawaiian shirt. Yep. So he beats up that you see in the trailers, he goes to an old lady's house and hunts this old lady. Um, we set up his signature move, which is putting wires up mm-hmm. that the vampires don't notice and chopping off their heads. Yep. Uh, but the action immediately gets established as like, it, so it's R- Sam Raimi esque, I would say. Yeah. It's like a because mix the- between Sam Raimi and John Wick. Yeah, the vampires are like deadites. And but sorry. A mix between Sam Raimi and John Wick. That's important to note because that is an incredible sentence, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> and it's true. Yeah. Um, I'm probably going to watch this movie again, Dave. <laughs> yes. This is one probably I would put on on a Friday soon. night. But yeah, we'll probably watch this on Friday. <laughs> yeah. Because this is one where it's like you don't you could talk over this too. Yeah. Um and so it's like wrestling moves where he's like slamming the vampire on the ground and the vampire will fold in an unnatural way but the vampire will be fine because it's a vampire yep. uh and so the fights there are, are so really many creative. like vampire hurricane ranas in this <laughs> and like yeah. what the, at, during this fight the vampire literally puts him in the crucifix uh, which yes. is a fucking wrestling you're right. move <laughs> you're right basically so the same way when when you look at a john wick action scene the the what makes a good john wick action scene in my opinion, 
is that it's very much going back to the this is a dance, mm-hmm. right? It's a it's, it's a, very much going. It's a back and forth escalation where like everybody yes. everybody's move is a response to the other person's move and is upping the ante. Right. It's like, oh, I, I throw a chair at you. You then use the chair as a weapon against me. And then like the chair breaks in half and we use pieces of the chair, mm-hmm. you know, where it's like this. Th- it's this cause and effect that's really. Uh, yeah. Th- and it, weirdly missing from other action. And it doesn't um, it doesn't do the it doesn't do the million cuts either. That's no, a, that's yeah. important. Yeah. So it's like watching it's watching a work of art mm-hmm. where you're watching uh, a fight choreographer just have a blast. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to yeah, them being like, "Oh, we'll just cut around it. Just, just you know, get us there." Nope. Uh, <laughs> I'm this and one. so like that's yeah, and that's super important for yeah. an action film. That's why I'm like, it's weird that some other action films don't do this, right? Because uh, it, 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 it's constantly resetting the momentum. Like the longer yeah. you keep that momentum of, that's when you start going like, oh, 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 shit, you know? Like, yeah, exactly. It's, that's what makes it fun. Yeah. And impressive. It's, and just, I don't know. It's, man. R- right. <laughs> and so imagine that, that John Wick style, but also one half of the fight is someone who is undead. Yeah. <laughs> and who is flexible and bendy and creepy They're and so can go floppy. to the ceiling. The vampires yeah. are so floppy, Dave. They're real floppy. They're real flop floppy pires. little boys. Yeah. <laughs> <Little> boneless <laughs> yeah. vampires. <laughs> Yeah, they really, they really are. So there's shit where like he busts a TV over someone's head, and you see this in the trailer, and then you kick the TV, and that beheads them. Mm-hmm. Shit like that, where it's these moves that are like a lot more um, complex and a lot more fun. Yeah, uh, that's working in gun stuff with with improvised weaponry, with all sorts of vampire hunting tools. Uh, so it's immediately a blast, and so he hunts this vampire, he kills this woman. He leaves and then it says day shift on the screen and it's like it tears into the screen like real 90s style and it's like, fuck, man. (laughs) And that's what I mean by like immediately in the first 10 minutes, you're like, I know exactly what this is. And Dave, and then he goes to sell his fangs to Peter Stormare and I'm like, we got a (laughs) fucking movie now. (laughs) (laughs) Peter Stormare working in the back of like electronic store buying Selling vampire fangs. (laughs) <laughs> it's a thing I believe he probably does in real life. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, if I ever killed a vampire, I'd take the, the first person. Like, okay, well, shit, what do we do? I don't know. We should probably take these to Peter Stormare. Right. And then we do one of the most 90s things this movie could do. This is actually the moment where I said, oh, this is a 90s film. I got it. And watch the movie based on that assumption is they cut to the villain in a construction site killing a random guy in a horrible way mm-hmm. another vampire that is so fucking 90s it to sure do that is, in yeah. your first like first 15 minutes they cut to the villain and she's running like a real estate company mm-hmm. it's so and it's like okay la villain real estate that just feels like so many like 90s and even 80s action yeah movies. it's chinatown with vampires <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and so it's just this villain like ha ha I'm so evil and, and and you're like all right got it I I got it all and we learn that he actually what he did in the beginning was kill her daughter mm-hmm. her elderly daughter because it's vampire rules yeah and they there's something like they got separated or something and they weren't able to yeah. turn her until she was already an old lady so that's why she's so much looks so much older right and then she's establishing some sort of like we're gonna it's like her plan is to make every all the vampires day walkers essentially yeah, right yeah she's one of there's like five different kinds of vampire species that they go through in the film and they normally don't some... live together or work together but she's trying to unite them all uh using all this property she's buying up with this special chemical compound that's basically vampire sunblock so they can be day walkers yeah there you go which again it, it replace sunblock with cocaine and you have like a 90s right, action it's movie. just lethal weapon three yeah that's the th- oh God, and that's yes. fine <laughs> it's perfect yeah. it's more than fine more i than love fine. it <laughs> it's excellent <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um yeah we storm air we establish and then we establish like he's not allowed in the union anymore where you can get the good money yeah because he, uh, he kept he kept breaking the rules uh and yeah. finally got kicked out they establish that he's a really good father, but he's just late all the time. They do, again, very 90s, where it's like, he's a good dad, but he's he's super divorced. Um, 
because he could never be there for his family because mm-hmm. he has to hide that he's a vampire hunter. Yep. Uh, and so they get all that out. Um, so now we know the villain. We know we know what he wants, which is like, oh yeah, you need ten thousand dollars to get your daughter back. The the basically what's happening is his wife is moving out and she needs to go to a new area, and she's noting like. We, we haven't paid school tuition. That's like five grand. She needs to go to the dentist. That's five grand. So basically, he's just like, well, what if I gave you the 10 grand? Maybe you could take the house off the market. That's the stakes. That's the deal. Yeah. So he's trying to earn money. That's it. Yeah. Uh, he, gets his, he gets his old pal Snoop Dogg, Big J. Yeah. He, oh, fuck. <laughs> Who is doing as he's doing what we need him to do. He's Whistler. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's Whistler. this movie's Whistler. But he's Snoop Dogg, but he's Snoop uh, Dogg. and that's so good. Um, so yeah, Snoop Dogg gets him back to the union. He's under like they let him it back in under like a strict probationary period, and as a, an extension of that, they attach Dave Franco, who's like a bean counter in the union, to yeah. Jamie Foxx's hip, who's supposed to like monitor everything he does to make sure he doesn't yeah. break any more rules. Which and of course he we does. Got a, yeah, we got a buddy and now cop we got movie. A fucking movie. We got some cuffs going on, some cuffs <laughs> shit. Because <laughs> it's like some Dave Franco, like, actually, you gotta play it by the book. And oh no, he's not gonna play it by the nope, book. Not at all. Don't don't but, you bring that book around here. This is day no. shift. <laughs> yep. I want to talk about the union itself. Was gr- I thought it was a great set because yeah. it's got like a DMV vibe to yeah, it. Yeah. But also like it's like wood paneling. It, it's it feels like a '90s office, like or even like like a '70s office. I love almost. that they took like the union logo and drew a pentagram around it. Yeah. Like, like the the goat head <laughs> pentagram. Yeah. Incredible. Incredible work. Uh, fantastic film. I want to spend 17 more hours in this universe. <laughs> Yes, that's the thing is when I saw that set, I was like, I really like this set. Uh, I I love, I just love the entire fucking look of this film. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. So now we have a buddy cop vampire movie where James Franco is like, ooh, I don't like Dave guns. Franco, I eat well. Dave Franco. Oh, right. Dave Stop Franco. Stop putting God that damn evil it. on him. It's my name. It's I my know. own name. It's your name, Dave. <laughs> David Franco. Yes. Uh, is like, oh, Davison look at me. Franco. <laughs> Yeah, Davison. <laughs> he's wearing a suit. Yep. Uh, he's he's like oh, summer I, suit. I'm, yeah, I'm I'm such a I'm such a dweeb. Yeah. I'm I I'm gonna keep, take notes and like write you up, and so he's gonna yeah, he's, he's gonna be taught how to be cool. He's a big old scaredy cat. What I never thought was gonna happen was that he was going to turn into a vampire and get his head cut off Mm -hmm. and and then just be his vampire sidekick yeah that was delightful be his like fucking karate vampire sidekick because when you become a vampire you learn you osmose karate right and they set up so the, the probably the biggest the biggest theme of the movie which i you know someone who perhaps didn't like the movie would point out this mm-hmm. is very bad um, is the exposition dumps uh, uh, at times are like yeah. pretty sweaty. They have these conversations where it's like, oh, did you know that this and this and this about vampires? And he's like, of course I did. Did you know this? And it's like, of course I did. And it's like, all right. Uh, well, I'm glad we all said that out loud. Yeah. It's fine. It's, a, it's, it's fine. A, I mean, they, they work. It's, it's the only time in the movie where I was like, that ah, yeah. sweaty ass exposition. Here yeah. we go. They do it in a way that's acceptable. It is sweaty um yeah but it is acceptable because it's like jamie fox like trying to guessing like he's testing dave franco's field right. knowledge basically yeah they do a pretty good job of it's just it's very visible yes um, yeah you can, yeah <laughs> it, yeah it's, it's not like, you know when you're watching a cartoon and you can see the thing that's animated that's clearly going to be interacted with and then apart yes. from that you can tell it's separate from like the background like that's what it's right. like that's like, what it's oh like. there's the exposition <laughs> Yeah, and they keep it to, I guess, here's the thing, it's not necessarily that load-bearing, because it's not about the plot, it's about the world. Yeah. So they're they're saying, like, oh, yeah, some vampires, don't they mention, like, some vampires can get, have their heads cut off yes. and be okay? Mm-hmm. And that's important, because uh, that's what happens to David Dave Franco. Franco. Yeah. Um, and so, that yeah, that all happens. They go to a bowling alley, <laughs> he kills some vampire teenagers. He sure does. Uh, Dave Franco throws up and pisses his pants. Yep. And like they show that in the trailer, but it actually it worked. I thought it worked uh, in this. 
<laughs> that was the part I was like, Dave Franco in general was the one that I was the most nervous about. Like when he shows up in the movie, I was like, I hope this character doesn't fuck up the movie because in the in the trailer he seemed a little shaky. Uh, no, I thought it was fine. Uh, yeah, I think he was fine because the moment he was like, "Oh, I'm the buy, buy the book uh, uh, fucking partner." Oh my god, you're you're reckless. This is nuts. Like he's the guy to just react to everything. Yeah, uh, for most of the movie, which is great. Yeah, and then he gets vampire powers for the finale. Yeah, so he's like yeah, yeah, yeah. galloping through there like an angry dog, <laughs> vampire kicking people. <laughs> right. Ah, oh, so good. And so somewhere along the line, they also establish that he has this neighbor who, like, you, you like again. This was another like, oh man, I <laughs> she. I wonder if she's gonna do anything. Yeah, I assume because... she'll come back. Yeah, it's yeah. he bumps into her, Jamie Fox bumps into her on the stairs. She's clearly a nurse she's has two laundry baskets full of scrubs he helps her put her laundry inside and then that's it but yeah it turns out she's a vampire yeah. uh begrudgingly working for the 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 evil head vampire uh she, she right. she's like she wasn't even a familiar she was just some random person that this vampire lady transformed so she's upset about it. How, yeah they're very accepting the vampire hunters with with vampires who are like no i'm cool and they're just like oh okay uh, <laughs> I mean, at least great. he is. At least he is. He, yeah, him they and sort Snoop of hide Dogg it are, from yeah. the union. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When Snoop shows up, he's just like, "Oh, you got some vampire friends? That's fine." Cool. <laughs> he shows up yeah. with his Gatling gun. Yeah, his Predator so, minigun, his Jesse uh, Ventura minigun. <laughs> so fucking good. It's the best. It's yeah. the scene from Rambo, like the the fourth Rambo, where Rambo jumps on the back of the truck and starts blasting everybody with that the 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 vehicle mounted machine gun yes it's oh, incredible so <laughs> yeah so basically i mean the, the plot is very simple he's trying to get this money dave franco is now like oh, i'm a little nerd tagging along and then the um they peter, peter stormare gets tortured to death he gets all his teeth he gets pulled his teeth out. yanked out of his face um because the the vampires are trying to get revenge of who killed her daughter uh, it has nothing to do with her like weird real estate plot. No, this is just Doesn't like a matter. side mission. Yeah, and so they 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 hunt down um, Jamie Fox. There's a great car chase mm -hmm. um, where like and you like they they give up on it where he's like, oh, put on your headphones, play your game, honey. D Daddy's gonna drive aggressively. And then like halfway through the car car chase, it's like, oh, okay, I'm i'm the kids now completely aware that something's up yeah and they go to the the mom's house and of course the vampires are already there they they have a great sequence i thought where he has to explain he's a vampire hunter mm -hmm. while they're under duress yeah and at first they just don't believe it yeah because why know would you? something's up yeah because why would you but then she realized very quickly like yeah these are vampires yeah, these are actual <laughs> vampires oh shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. I thought they did good with the like the ex-wife, her like slowly processing all of this. Yeah. So uh, we got our third act for whatever reason, because it's a 90s movie. The villain just kidnaps the wife and daughter instead of murdering them, because the whole thing is she's like, you killed my daughter. I'm going to take away your daughter. So that seems like something you could do in an afternoon, right? Yeah. And instead, she takes into like this magical temple that's like hidden beneath the ground. I don't yeah. know why. I don't know why either. But she, she does sense. that. Like her plan is she's going to turn the little girl into a vampire and make her eat her mom. Right. Which is and pretty hardcore. That's, that's good yeah, revenge. You, Solid revenge. She, right. It is. And you think she'd want Jamie Foxx to like watch, but no, they just leave him there with Dave Franco because they turned him again. Very nineties. Yeah. It's very much. I'm going to leave you in this easily, easy to escape trap. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so he cuts off Dave Franco's head, and I thought it would have been amazing if we never saw that character again. <laughs> but no, he, I mean, he's, I th uh, I he's think, a special vampire. I think that would have... I was uh, a little worried there for a second, because I think that would have been a mistake. Um, yeah, I guess. I think that would have been a, a very bold thing to do mm -hmm. that would have made me laugh a lot. Yeah. But, but you're right, it would have been too serious. Yeah. But instead, they make him just like a, a kooky undead sidekick, which... Right. Perfect. Perfect. Yep. <laughs> no notes for a vampire film there are very there's very few stakes both figuratively and literally yeah uh, it's mostly yeah. bullets mostly bullets decapitations yeah but they have special uh, bullets like hellboy 
Yeah, of course they do. Uh, and, and they're allergic to wood. The vampires wood in this? and garlic. Yeah, so they they have like a smoke grenade that has like sawdust and garlic in it, and that like yeah. fucks them up. And then he puts like wood pellets into his shotgun. It's kind of cool. Is that so? That's why stake through the heart is uh, the idea that they're. I don't know. I think this is this movie is just kind of doing its own riff on vampire mythology. It is, they all sort of do a little say bit of it. It's pretty close. It's pretty close to the classic. Mm-hmm. Like they don't see their reflection. Sunlight hurts them silver um, and and stake to the heart decapitation yeah. Yep. and yeah it's mostly the stuff you expect um yeah yeah um so he has to go yeah he has to get his fucking they they do a lock and load sequence to fucking body count yep and that made me so happy yep. when his body count started it was i lost my shit oh man holy shit the music in this is fantastic. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty great. It. It. it yeah. I think it is a bunch of '90s hip hop, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, again, it knows exactly what it's what it's trying to be here. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they they go uh, big action. Snoop shows up to help them because Dave Franco texted yeah. him. <laughs> he kills uh, 300 people with his minigun. Yeah. <laughs> they go down to the creek. It really is. Yep. Uh, they they give yeah they give Snoop a heroic death scene, but don't yeah. kill him. He yeah, gets then to he eat. Pops he gets out to have of the sewer at the too. end. <laughs> yeah. Where he detonates an explosive device on his chest, um, and then they fight the mini boss, the two vampires, and uh, yeah, Jamie Fox fights the main vampire woman and they pay off at the end he sets they don't we don't see it but he decapitates her by setting down the same wire trap Mm -hmm. at the beginning cuts her head off gets his family back he gets to pay because the vampire teeth that he they pulled out is were is uh valuable uh the union guy is like ah chewing him out because he's like the chief yeah and dave franco defends him with more union rules uh everything wraps up yeah and Snoop Dogg and comes Snoop, out. And, and, and as they drive off into the sunset, Snoop Dogg pops out of the sewer. Yeah. To say the thing I love about LA is all the damn vampires, which is a Lost Boys reference. Uh, yeah, and then the amazing. credits roll uh, over a Snoop Dogg song. Yeah. That's all. And, and like, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> what more could you ask for? I don't know, man. <laughs> it's it's so perfect. Make, it's so make perfect. three more of these. I don't give a shit. Yeah. It's little, uh, I'm trying to think of like, how, how did this delight me so much? Um, I think the, and it, for me, it was just so much of it was like, I was really not expecting much from this movie. Um, like I was expecting another project power. Same here. Um, Same here. I was, was not expecting much. The action was so fun and the tone was like the perfect f- type of tone for this sort of movie. It, it, it knew it, not to take itself seriously because why, why bother? You keep referring to Project Power, and I only just remembered what that movie was. Yeah. That movie, I completely forgot existed. Yep. That's another Jamie Foxx movie. Mm -hmm. And Joseph Gordon-Levitt. It's not the same, it's not the same people, it looks like. Okay. Just, just Jamie Foxx and the fact that it was a Netflix movie. Yeah, like, that one was, like, it's sort of, like, the, more of what they've been doing, like, that, and, like, uh, I don't know, uh, the Gray Man, um uh just with i don't yeah, know you thought it was going to be a mediocre or yeah, another just I, like i would argue extraction i would argue yeah. the one the other one the um i forget um i was a little because one of the co-writers is the co-writer of fucking army of thieves and army of the dead mm-hmm. um and john wick three well and john wick three is yeah. delightful but you, there's no writing my point is that army of the dead i thought had some terrible writing oh i didn't watch army of the oh wait Yes, I watched. No, you Ar- watched Army of the Dead. I watched Army of the Dead, not Army of Thieves. That's okay. No, I didn't watch Army of Thieves either. But that's what made me nervous when I first saw it because I think about Army of the Dead and how like the writing I thought was bad. The difference is though is that I think Army of the Dead just was was it took itself too seriously. So it's yeah, again for the most that part, thing yeah. where yeah, I, I guess what it is is that when a movie is like because I would argue this movie of course again is silly. It's got yeah. tons of plot holes. Yeah uh tons of ridiculous choices this is, this is a this is a b movie but like the best this is what you want a b movie to be this is like everything right. you hope for when you watch a b movie yeah i guess what i'm going for is yeah it's it's all about intent and presentation mm-hmm. it, it really is to me with stuff like this uh where it's it's 
I don't know. It, it, there's a lot of context around why a movie like this for me works mm-hmm. and a movie like, I don't know, the fourth Thor, why like that, there was so many inconsistencies that popped out where it's like, well, what, why are the rules different for the two movies? You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so it's so, it's so hard to like explain it, I guess, where it comes, it really comes down to tone and the style movie that's being made, right? Yeah, uh, I think that's part of it for sure. Like, yeah, because this is like with a movie like Thor. Like Thor, in our episode, you know, we both landed on. We had a lot of fun watching it. You know, it was funny and like everybody had good chemistry. But like, there wasn't much of right. a story. And you know, there's it's an it's a Marvel movie, so the action is like fucking whatever. You know, yeah, it's it's extremely CGI. Yeah. So like the action, you don't get much from it in terms of an action movie. Yeah. Um, as an adventure, I think it also has to do with the characters themselves. Which is that character decisions in this movie, in Day Shift, for the most part, when it comes to what the characters want and how they go about getting it, and the consistency of that is, is all the same. It's, it's the logic of the world is consistent. The characters' wants and needs are very clear, that's, and they act upon it. That's definitely a huge part of yeah. what can... The, like, the, the chief sin that uh turn your brain off style movies tend to commit is not being consistent within their own universe right Um, and this movie doesn't do that so that's you know good good job movie (laughs) yeah and i think it's that in combination with it gives you it it says okay so you're gonna have to accept that this is silly Mm mm-hmm in exchange, we're going to give you these action sequences. Yeah. And they're going to be really compelling and good. Yeah. And so it's almost to me like these types of movies, there's an exchange there. Yeah, exactly. There's a, we're, yeah. If, if you forgive the fact that this movie's dumb. And so going back to like Army of the Dead, um, a movie that took itself way too seriously, I would say it had some, that had some fun action. Um, I, st- I, Army still, of the Dead. I still mostly enjoy Army of the Dead. I yeah, do agree I would it's a little that movie, too serious. Yeah, yeah, that movie would have rocked so much harder yeah. if they had more fun. Yeah, more and fun. So, like in the, in the beginning, you can see like a flying saucer flying over Las Vegas. I'm like, that's the, what the fucking movie should have been like. Yeah, it should have been weirder. Yeah, it should have been. It should have, yeah, taken itself less seriously. And so it's, it's, uh, I don't know. I think that's a better comparison only because it's the same writer. Because I argue that, like, had this movie been directed differently, Mm -hmm. it would have been terrible. It could have been, yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Like, we we would have been talking about the plot holes all the time because if it took its, if it tried to be really serious, like Project Power, or if it had, then we would have, or if it hadn't executed the action as well as it had. Yeah. But this movie, again, from the very start says, hey, you know those 90s action films? This is going to be one of them. Yeah. We're going to make it very clear in our musical choice, in our graphics, this is a 90s action film. Like, we're going to, it really felt like it was telling us that. Mm -hmm. And the moment that clicked in my brain, it was like, oh, okay, so that's the standard I'm going to hold this to immediately. Yeah. That's the nostalgia you're tapping, which is, for me, a very good nostalgia. Uh, That's the tone. And then it never did anything to falter from that. Right. It's and like, so like, like you said, it's the sort of, it's part of willful suspension of disbelief. It's sort of like the, uh, when you, you have to sort of meet a movie on its own terms, I guess. Like, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have to engage the movie the way it, it, it sort of is, is asking you to in, engage with it. Um, uh, and then it, it um, and then in its part, it has to stay consistent with what it, told you if that if, if right. anything i just said makes sense <laughs> yeah and then it has to be and then it has to be fun and it has to be fun like that's, yeah that's the other key element is I, l- the other night i watched jurassic world like i said and i i've heard people argue like well that's a fun it's just a fun dumb dinosaur movie and it's like but here's the thing it wasn't fun it's not fun so it was just a dumb dinosaur movie yeah it's just <laughs> like it's that's just yeah, dumb <laughs> yeah yeah and it's not well made mm-hmm. and so it's like there it's not like oh there's so many plot holes but man that sequence and that sequence was great it's like no there was a lot of plot holes and also those sequences were bad it's not fun to watch yeah yeah so it's like i'll accept was- a dumb shit movie about you know whatever uh as long as you make it fun <laughs> to watch right <laughs> And so it's, it's, I don't know, it, it's very interesting to think about, I guess. Yeah. Is like having watched like those two movies back to back and having to think to myself, like, why does this work and the other movie doesn't? I think the, the, 
the point that we're circling, I think, or at least one of them, is that these movies are harder to pull off than they seem. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. That's like yeah. that's like when, um, like, if you've seen the Every Frame of Painting about Michael Bay, mm-hmm. uh, where it's like, Michael Bay is, I, I would argue, not very good, and he does a lot of stupid stuff, but his action sequences are hard to do. It's hard to do what he does. Yes, it is. Yeah. You have to you have to risk a lot of stuntmen yeah, lives. Yeah, you have to risk to do a lot of lives. I, I would even before his last few. I've not seen Ambulance, but Six Underground was atrocious. But like, I would even yeah, say I'm done with Michael Bay. Bay was pretty good uh, as an action director. You know, before the whole Transformers yeah. schlock. That's that's what I mean. Even the Transformers have some good action in them. Mm-hmm. They're mostly noise. Yeah, the CGI ruined him, and also he ruined himself by being horrible to stunt people. Yeah. So, like, I, I'm resigned to be like, yeah, I'm done with Michael Bay. And then also his movies just got really creepy and weird and racist. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the uh, point is, though, is that it's much more difficult to do than you might think. Like, yeah, exactly. it's, it's not you it's can't a, just be like, oh, here's like a goofy premise about vampire hunters and we can just roll with that. It's like, well, no, like you need to like you can't sort of uh be like oh whatever it's it's goofy dumb fun it's 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 whatever it's like well no you have to like make the action good or you know or like make make sure the chemistry is there between the actors or you know yeah and it's there yeah it is i i i agree but i'm saying it's like i i think that's like the point one of the points we've been circling is that absolutely this is not so easy to do even though it seems like it should be the easiest thing in the world yes it's 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 hard to make good movies dave (laughs) No, it's hard to make good movies, and it's also hard to make, like, stupid movies. Yeah, it's hard to make a B-movie. It's hard to make a B-movie that is actually fun, because so many... Exactly. So many fun, bad movies, or, like, I don't want to call this movie bad, because I don't think it is, Uh, but it's hard to make a fun B-movie. For sure. Most often, you end up making a boring B-movie, which then you've you've made a bad film. Right, because there are so many movies from the 90s, from the era I'm nostalgic for, that are terrible. Yes, uh we just Mountains watched some trash yeah we just decade. watched uh fucking red heat mm-hmm. and that's a movie that was like man they didn't pull this off yeah that's 80s, uh, spoilers yeah. for our our yeah but yeah like that that's the thing is like we only remember the ones that pull it off for sure mm-hmm. uh and like yeah this i don't know this pulled it off that's really what it comes down to yeah. for me I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to talk too much more because we're just going to keep repeating ourselves, but... Uh, For sure. This movie was fun as fuck. This uh, movie was fun as fuck. Watch it. It's, like, really fun. Like, I watched it with my mom. And she, nice. And she, enjoyed she, like it. It. she enjoyed it. Yeah. It's enjoyable. <laughs> my mom, this is, I'll t- this is the funniest thing. My mom watched the first hour and ten minutes with me, and then she had to get up and leave to go to church. And then <laughs> when she came back from church, finished the movie that's great so. oh that's so good i hope she told everybody at church about I it too she, i hope she did yeah the priest is just fucking watching it at home now just like this is awesome oh man it is awesome it, it is. is a lot it was of a fun. lot of fun it was uh it yeah. was super fun um this is like when when yeah this is what i define as a shut your brain off enjoy it type of movie yeah that's what it comes down to is mm-hmm. this is my version of that movie that I hear so much about and when so, people talk about Marvel films. So few of them actually are, or like actually yeah. pull it off. Uh, but this one, 100%. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Love this Love this stupid movie. Uh, yeah. And we love you. We, we do. We love each we and love every one you, of you. We love you, Greg. Mm. Talking to you, Greg. That's right, Greg. You know it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know who you are. Listen, uh, we have a Patreon patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed uh you hear about this you hear, you hear about this you, you hear this? about this you seen this <laughs> <laughs> you can, i've got some clippings you, can, you should look at <laughs> listen you go on there for five dollars a month you get access to all our exclusive podcasts we have a bunch of free podcasts that you're listening to right now on a regular channel but if you go on there you get access to tom and jeff watch batman fox Mulder's a maniac star trek the next futurama and spiel boys mm. all for five dollars a month if you want to pay a little more, $10 a month, that is the movie night we've been talking about. Yeah. Where we, every Friday night, we watch movies with our patrons. We sure do. Uh, we will probably watch this. We'll probably watch, probably watch fucking Jurassic, the new Jurassic World. World. Yeah. Yeah. We do all that oh. through, we do all that through Discord, but you get, you know, connected to it through our Yeah, Patreon. you get access. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Our Discord has the different tiers as well. Uh, if you don't know what the Discord is, ask, ask your child. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, <laughs> which isn't to say that we're tapped into the youth. No, I, I don't want to. Like, I don't want people to think that it's like the Minecraft episode uh, of South Park. Like the the code is like, how do you train a horse in Minecraft? So they they made wait they made a Minecraft yeah episode like of ten South Park? like ten years ago. But yeah, I'm so old. Mm-hmm. I have to watch that. Yeah, it's how they gatekeep. It's how they know whether or not you're 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 a youth is if you can tell them how to train a horse and in, in <laughs> oh Minecraft. you just keep getting on it anyway. until it. <laughs> you just keep getting on it until it. I think that's. Come. I think that's what it was. Anyway, uh, yeah. we also have a store. <laughs> head over to gamefullyunemployed.com where you can find a link to our Teespring store. We have all kinds of cool original artwork and designs you can get on T-shirts, mugs, stickers, posters, all sorts of things. Uh, so slap your little your little vampy fangs, uh, your, yeah. your, your little biteies uh, on that. Uh, uh, yeah. and check that out. Yeah, and apologies to Dave Franco. For getting his name wrong and also a lot of other things. <laughs> he knows. He'll know what it means. 